Well, there, there are several initiatives related to uh, coral restoration. Uh, mainly, if we look at the opportunities that we are currently funding, uh, one of them, it's with, uh, with the grant that was awarded to Blue Tide. First, we need to have a coherent uh, methodology. Uh, one thing that uh, Gifre mentioned earlier that uh, it's, it's critical to understand in Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico legislated to have uh, blue infrastructure considered as critical infrastructure in uh, Act 72 of 2020. So that basically it's a huge move forward because it creates the opportunity for federal agencies. And here's something very uh, uh, important to understand. There is local primacy. Uh, federal agencies don't come here and uh, state what to do. We basically support ini local initiatives. And uh, you have the University of Puerto Rico currently working with a NOAA uh, grant for inland coral restoration laboratories. That is NOAA in the research side. When you move into the uh, economic development side, part of the grant that Blue Tide has, they've been able to bring uh, two 24-foot 20, uh, uh, boats designed to be able to do small-scale coral restoration in the field. Uh, the equipment that they've acquired has the intent to support that effort. In addition to that, they've, uh, they're in the process, uh, not them, uh, there is a, a 73 foot uh, research vessel being built as we speak that should arrive in Puerto Rico by uh, January, January 2022. That uh, vessel has the equipment and capacity to do large scale core restoration efforts. So in addition to that, Puerto Rico, in their efforts to redevelop Roosevelt Roads, uh, requested a grant to EDA to build the first Ocean Institute, the Marine Business Research and Innovation Center, to be built in the former Coast Guard Pier. That award has been already uh, awarded. So we're talking about a $16 million project with the intent to house uh, inland coral restoration facilities, state-of-the-art inland coral restoration facilities. So when you look at the efforts, we have the University of Puerto Rico with their research going on. We have an investment on the equipment through uh, an NGO, Blue Type Puerto Rico, and we're still leveraging the investment of infrastructure at the, uh, the local, uh, local redevelopment authority of the Department of Economic Development and Commerce uh, led by uh, Neil de Martran uh, under the direction of uh, Secretary Cidre as one of the initiatives of positioning Puerto Rico in the uh, forefront of ocean economy. So coral restoration is a huge component. Uh, if we're able to produce more corals than the corals that are dying, we basically buy time uh, while we come up with solid uh, technology to address the current issues. So one key thing that Puerto Rico has a key position uh, with regards to the economic recovery plan, uh, our efforts since 2018, is that if we put together all these efforts in little bite-sized pieces, we come up with a solution and not necessarily a project. What we're looking at is how can we leverage all the federal funding, uh, local initiatives, international technology, and use the Blue Tide uh, Caribbean Summit to showcase how all these pieces come together. Uh, how can we basically support a island-wide initiative? How can we support a, a US Caribbean initiative? How can we support an opportunity for export of technology? It's not if there's a next disaster, it's when. So, what we're doing with uh, supporting all these coral initiatives, it allows us to build not only climate resiliency, but economic resiliency. We're able to build opportunities that allow for uh, coastal communities to be more resilient, to allow uh, the US Army Corps of Engineers to better support 
local efforts in planning and coastal erosion. Uh, support the University of Puerto Rico with uh, their efforts in coastal erosion protection. So this is not a, a single effort. It's not a single fund. It's, uh, it's an aggregate. And this Blue Tide uh, Caribbean Summit brings all these elements into one single place so that the private sector uh, understands what role they play in this bigger picture and what economic opportunities for Puerto Rico we actually have. Muy bien, continuamos en inglés. Tenemos una eh, pregunta que parece ser la continuación de esa, que es cuál es la importancia de la economía azul en relación a la economía de Puerto Rico. Right. Uh, thank you. Well, in uh, 2016, NOAA conducted a, uh, a, a feasibility analysis of the blue economy or the ocean economy. In that study uh, for Puerto Rican Virgin Islands, it, it, it showcased that it was underrepresented and understudied. So when the hurricanes hit, it basically surfaced that there is a huge opportunity. So the amount and the opportunity of the blue economy does not necessarily rest on the government, it rests on the private sector being able to capitalize on it. It rests on the nonprofit sector to be able to uh, channel uh, federal funding. Uh, one of the really cool things that we uh, identified in the process is if we compared Puerto Rico and Hawaii, for example, on discretional funds, competitive funds of only five uh, agencies as a sample, we identified that Puerto Rico had a delta, a difference of $200 million less than Hawaii. But it was not because of the political nature or the uh, particular essence of Puerto Rico being different. It was mainly because Hawaii had 198 additional NGOs, organizations, uh, non-government organizations, seeking funds. Puerto Rico had 68. So in the only uh, lane that we saw a, a difference that was inverted, that Puerto Rico had more funds, was with discretional funds for EPA, where Puerto Rico had more agents, more organizations seeking funds than Hawaii. So from a sample standpoint, if we build a stronger NGO sector, we are able to uh, capture more opportunities. And by capturing more opportunities, well, it means that we're gonna be able to bring more funds to address current situations and have business continuity and uh, economic resilience, which is the uh, overall intent that we're able to mitigate future disasters faster and more effectively. So. By putting this in context, the opportunity that we have, we have an opportunity to grow the nonprofit sector, uh, the opportunity that will allow the government to be more effective and efficient, the opportunity for the private sector to grow faster. But in order to do all this, we need to look at this in a cohesive manner. We need to look at, at the big picture, identify the gaps and address them. Education would be the uh, primary element. And I would say not only education from a uh, academic, academic standpoint, I, I would like to say there is an opportunity for K-12 education. We need to educate the uh, future adult. We need to educate the private sector on the opportunities. And uh, we need to educate the communities in how to work together. How can we look for solutions together? We're an island and uh, we will not be able to get trains from uh, Louisiana. So what we have is what we have. We have an opportunity to become productive. So the communities, and I, I know this is a really long sentence and a longer paragraph, but it all lies on education and access to the opportunities. And that's why organizations like Blue Tide working with the academia bring this element of coherence and access. We've proven that we can. Uh, 
Puerto Rico was not working with Virgin Islands uh, three years ago. Today, we have an MOU between the University of Virgin Islands and the University of Puerto Rico. It is possible. We have a uh, historic strategic alliance submitting an EDA University Center amongst both universities. And we're working on an economic development district in the south of Puerto Rico that's going to set the stage for an interjurisdictional economic development district between Puerto Rico and Virgin Islands in the near future. So it has been a lot of legwork, but it has all started with the same premise, education. So uh, being an island, uh, we have been, we have been uh, educated uh, to see the ocean as the frontier. No? That's our frontier, uh, where, where it ends. We talked about Puerto Rico all, uh, all the time. It's 100 by 35. But really, we have 200 mile, nautical miles to the north and 200 nautical miles to the south that it, it, it haven't been developed. So uh, that's, that's one. When I say that um, we need to start looking at the ocean as not as a, a frontier, but as a, an ex a territorial extension of ourselves, that it's capable of giving us food by, by doing uh, mariculture and uh, uh, putting together uh, the, the fishermen and Villas Pesquera to start seeing the opportunity of not only uh, use the, uh, uh, their, uh, their, their normal uh, boats, like Una Yola or, or uh, small boats to go fishing, but to unite themselves, let's do a co-op co and buy a, a bigger boat that can allow them to be on the water for two uh, weeks instead of a couple of hours. Uh, so uh, there's an opportunity there in that sense. Uh, energy, uh, we have tidal movement, so kinetic energy could be a solution for us. Uh, we have difference in, in uh, temperatures from the, uh, uh, from the bottom to the, the top of the surface of the, of the ocean. So we can actually uh, use that thermal uh, change to generate energy as well. And uh, we have winds uh, in Puerto Rico. Uh, the, the winds, the trade winds, come from the northeast. So there's a, an opportunity there as well. No? And uh, when I say a economic development, we're talking about, uh, let's say, for instance, a, a, right now there's a lot of people that are uh, preoccupied by the well being of the reefs. But uh, we have uh, many people that go, go with their boats and they throw the anchor. And that anchors, they reap a, a, a part, uh, they reap uh, those reefs as well. So how can we help those? Imagine that we have a buoy uh, parking lot, okay? Where the, you can go and, and just uh, grab a, a, a rope and, and just tie to it, to that buoy and you can spend the night there or the, day, the whole day without having to throw an anchor. Uh, in that sense, we, you, in the uh, British Virgin Islands, they have some, something like that, but uh, they, they pay right there. And, and there's another person in the, in, in, let's say, in the uh, vicinity that goes and, pay, and gives you food, ice, uh, and brings you every, anything you can need there. So that's economic development as well. That's an opportunity. And at the same time, we're uh, helping uh, our reefs to uh, be stable. So there's a lot of opportunities that we normally don't see because we just we are educated to see the ocean as a frontier instead of a, an opportunity or a, a territorial extension. So. <clears throat> Uh, as I mentioned before, the event is going to take place at the uh, newly uh, renovated Conquistador Hotel uh, in Fajardo, Puerto Rico. The dates are going to be August 4, 5, and 6 of this year, uh, starting at 8 a.m. Uh, to register or to uh, get more information, you simply have to go to the official event website, which is at www.bluetidecaribbean.com. Uh, um, 
bluetightcaribbeansummit.com. Um, the type of people that are going to be assisting are leaders uh, in the economic sector, uh, business leaders, uh, and also ed 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 educators um, uh, and people that are uh, directly or indirectly connected to the ocean or uh, activities related to the ocean. 